Okay, this is part two, working on the uh, Articat H1650. And uh, if you haven't seen the uh, previous video, make sure you go check that out. There's a little uh, icon right up here, top corner of your screen. And uh, make sure you check out part one before you watch this video here. And also, if you want to see us hauling home this four-wheeler and uh, getting it loaded and everything on my Mazda with the Kia engine with the uh, custom-made pickup bed for loading stuff like this four-wheeler and et cetera, uh, make sure you check that out. Again, there will be a little tag up here at the top corner of your screen to uh, go to that video. I guess you guys will start off here and where you left off last time. Thanks for watching. All right, I finally got everything cleaned and taken apart. Like I said earlier, um, this side plate was left kind of partially open sitting out. And so it wasn't real bad. There's nothing damaged or anything. But it had a lot of dirt and grime had blown into it. And so it took a long time to get all that cleaned out. I cleaned it mostly with acetone, which works really well for cleaning up oil and stuff. And a brush and rags and those blue paper towels and junk like that. Used an air hose and blew some of it out. That worked okay. It's just a long process and just tedious. And so, and I made sure I cleaned my gasket area here and stuff really well. And so that way that'll seal up nice. You can't really have any oil at all on those gaskets or where you're going to make your gasket with your sealant. And so you want to make sure that's completely clean. So that's the way it is with cars or anything like that. So I cleaned it with acetone. Acetone just takes oil residue right off. It's about the best you can use. I did get all the bolt holes cleaned out and all the mud dauber nests and gunk out of those. The clean out bolt I made worked really well. So I got that taken care of. So I guess now we are ready to uh, put the new starter clutch on this, or the one-way clutch, I think is what they call it. I'll see how that goes. It's got to be those um, Torx bolts are torqued to 26 pounds, I believe. And so I already have my torque wrench set for that. I've got my crescent wrench ready to fit on here. And if you notice me acting weird with my tools, the inside of these are mag these are a magnet. Because that runs your stator or your generator, whatever you want to call it, to charge your battery. And so if you notice the tools they stick to it, which makes it a kind of a pain in the neck to work with because your tools always want to be pulled to one side. Anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and start getting some of this in place. Here's the new clutch. That just sits on the back. Line it up. And I'm going to just barely start these because you're supposed to put Red Loctite on these as you go together. Yep, see how that's stuck there? It's annoying. And so what I'm going to do is barely thread the tip of them in. Then I'll drop that clutch down and drip a little Loctite in on them. Uh, I was a little surprised that they have you using red Loctite on everything. Normally, you know, you're pretty sparing on using red Loctite because it's very permanent. You know, normally I only use blue on stuff when I'm working on a car or something, but... The manual says red, so we're going to use red. Which I can see their point. If this is maybe prone to coming loose or something, you do not want one of these bolts to come loose. And there's quite a few gears and stuff in the side of these, and it could cause a lot of damage really quick. So I reckon that's probably why they have you using red, is just to ensure that it all stays together. And this is the flywheel. And so on the main bolt, you know, I can't remember how to check what the torque specs is on it. But, you know, what's in there, then you do not want coming loose. So I can see why they have you put red Loctite on that nut as well. Okay, there's that. See how I can drop that down? And I can go ahead and just put the Loctite in on those, and then just screw them all in real quick. Is that uh, Loctite can... You want to get things torqued quick, because once that Loctite starts spreading, if you're not careful, you're torquing against the Loctite itself. And you're not actually torquing the bolt tight. So you do not want to have that happen. So we'll see if we can pull this off. It's a little hard to hold on to everything while you're torquing. 
if I have to, I'll uh, quickly slide it onto the shaft of the engine and that will kind of hold it in place for me a little better maybe. So once I get the Loctite on, I might do that. Whoop. Thinner than I thought it was. This is the Loctite gel, not the liquid. And the reason I'm using that is just because the hardware store was out of the liquid and all he had was gel. So that's the only reason I'm using it instead. Okay. They both have their places. I kind of like the liquid, personally. Because even though it's more of a mess than sometimes, it also is easier to, dr to drip into a location. So, and it kind of spreads nicely on the bolt. I kind of just like it a little better, but the gel works just fine. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just slide this onto the crank. There you go. That'll kind of just hold it in place for me. course like torquing anything you want to make multiple rounds in a crisscross pattern you don't want to just go circular you ever have a bolt trying to miss thread not want to catch the thread right go backward and hold slight pressure against it with your hand and you'll feel the thread drop into its slot and then go forward. That's something that not everybody knows. It's common in working on computers and electronics because the threads are so fine on that stuff you can't, you can miss thread and mess up something really easy working on a computer. And so it's kind of a little bit of a trade thing that people in the tech world do when they're working on computers. There, don't if it clicks, don't go a tiny bit further because once it clicks, that is your torque. If you further, you're putting extra weight on it, and that is not something like this. It's less of a problem, but if you're doing a head or something, you could ruin a gasket that way. You end up having to redo your entire head gasket job. People often do not uh, pay enough attention to torque specs. Especially on this newer stuff where a lot of it's aluminum, torque specs are very important. Alright, torque specs for the flywheel nut is 107 pounds. So I already got my torque wrench set. So I can socket. Gotta make sure you have a tight socket or your torque specs will not be right. It's red Loctite as well. 
Also, I'm going to go ahead and get my wrench in place because I will need that on there. And I actually don't need help with this because it'll just set right down against the frame and it'll hold itself. Stuff like this, I always feel like I'm going to strip the bolt out or something. There it is. Also, I took that off with a torque with a uh, impact wrench, so I had no feeling of what it was like taking off. It makes it a little more nerve wracking when you're actually pulling it, when you're actually retorquing it, then. Because otherwise, I would have an idea what it felt like coming off. And you're not so nervous when you're taking it back, when you're putting it back on. But when you don't know what that feel is coming off, going back on, it's a little <laughs> nerve-wracking when you're torquing really hard on something. Because I have made mistakes before and stripped things out by setting my torque roll on a wrench or having the roll number. Things can happen. There we go. That went well. Next is check out everything right here. Goes back on. That goes on there, and then this net goes on it. I've got to go find the torque specs for this because I don't know what that is. So we'll be back. I couldn't really find the torque specs for this nut that goes on in here, but I believe this is more or less just a cover. It doesn't back the nut or anything. It just slips on there and it's just a cover and it just seals oh it seals up uh, there's a seal here that's what I'm gonna say there's a seal in the end of the plate with a bearing and basically all that is is for that bearing and that seal to run onto so I'll just put some Loctite on it like I have everything tighten it up just a good amount actually before I put it on here I'd find the right socket but tighten it up a good amount and just call it there, it'll be fine. I'm just going to put some sealant on, put all my bolts in, and I did have to get a bolt that does not, uh, it was missing the bolts. Somebody, whoever took those out, they lost them. I don't know who was the one that worked on this, because I know it wasn't my dad. His health wasn't good enough to work on it himself, so somebody else must have, and he wasn't the type to lose bolts either. But anyway, whoever did lost the bolts, use them for something else, I don't know. But the original bolts, if I was going to order them from an Arctic Cat part supplier, were around three dollars per bolt and they were a 20 millimeter long six millimeter bolt so i just went on ebay or i found somebody there's a lot of people on there that sell bolts of course and i just found some that would work with the right size and just got those there's no reason to, and they're just a regular hex head bolt there's no reason to uh go with the torx other than just everything's kind of torx on here and so i'm just going to use those instead I am using a few of the remaining original bolts because they were longer or something like that. But otherwise, I'm just going with the replacements. All right, now when you put this cover on, you do want to pay attention to uh, this shaft here. That runs your water pump that mounts on the outside of this casing. And the reason you want to pay attention to that is because down in here, you'll see there's a corresponding gear with a... Uh, matching cut so that shaft will line up with it and so what I want to do is as I go together you can see the gear you can see it you want to make sure that shaft on your water pump 
is turned so it matches up with that all right. Because you don't want that hanging you up when you're trying to go together. And so pretty much it's straightforward. I'm just going to put sealant on, set it in place, start getting my bolts in. Even though I just said I always torque everything, I'm not going to be torquing these as I go in on this case. I'll just be judging them by hand and being careful. And the sole reason I am doing that is I do not have a torque wrench small enough. These torque down by I think six pounds or eight pounds is what these little bolts go down to. And I just don't have a torque wrench that small. I normally would borrow one, but I'm not going to be able to do that today. And so I'm just going to go by hand, be careful. It is just worse that happens. I end up having to pull it back off, put new sealant on it, and then torque them right. But I don't think I'm going to have any trouble. It's just, it just has to be an oil seal along there. You can order a gasket to go in there, which I probably should have done, but I don't have one. I didn't, don't have the time to order one. But I got some really good sealant that I use. I uh, heard about it. It's because it's common to use in cars. Uh, Subaru people really like it because boxer engines like to leak on their valve covers since they set sideways. So it's um, Right Stuff by Permatex. It sets really quick. It sets really tight. It's more of a silicone than like a make a gasket. And um, we've had really good luck with it. And a lot of people say that when you have something that just will not stop leaking on a seal, use this and it works. And that's been my experience with it. And so we uh, have started using it on most things. And the cool thing also is it comes in a big caulking tube. It's expensive, but this caulking tube doesn't dry up. It's really good about not drying up the whole tube. So it'll last you for a long time. You can do a whole bunch of engine work and sealing work with this before you have to finally replace it. Calling it here for the day. Uh, got the starter in too. I have to get some bolts for it because whoever took the starter, they took the bolts, lost the bolts. So I gotta get bolts for that. I'm gonna be cleaning the radiator out next because it's completely full of mud and gunk. Something to keep in mind if you're ever driving these through cricks and stuff, wash out your radiator more regularly. Anyway, so I got this side back together. You saw me cutting the bolts. I had to cut some so they would fit here because I needed something shorter. And so we got those replaced. And then you can see the replacement bolts there, they're a little bit different style. They came from somebody that actually sells vintage motorcycle parts, but they're the right size and they're cheap. Um, I want, I ordered some that this is what I got. And I ordered the ones without a shoulder where it threads all the way up. But they sent the ones that have a shoulder and I didn't like that because I knew I would need to cut some. So, but they worked. I wasn't thrilled, but they worked. So that's why we got some now that are Torx and the hex head. 
I would have liked to have just had all hex so they matched, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we got a little bit of a problem down here for the water pump. The bolts that will go through here are longer, and whoever tightened those in last over tightened them like I was talking about earlier, and they stripped out about the quarter inch of thread those go into. There's more thread deeper. So I'm gonna go to the hardware store, see if he has any bolts that are slightly longer. We'll replace them with those, see if we can get that to work. Worst comes to worst, I'll re-drill and go up a size and re-tap it. I really don't want to do that, but we can. Uh, but that's it for a while. Weather's going to turn cold, so we'll take a break on this. Uh, next, I think, is washing and pressure washing to get all that taken care of, because we got the CV joints taken care of and rebooted. The seat's been recovered. So once we get all the cleaning and all the dirt, and there's a ton of dirt and gunk piled up in here. He used it a lot going through, I don't know what all, so it's got a lot of dirt and stuff packed into it. We'll get all that washed out. I need to see what all it'll take to get this valve cover leak taken care of so it stops leaking oil. I think I'll take apart the air cleaner assembly and pull it off in order to get to it. Not sure yet. So that'll be next. And then I think the only other thing is this. I don't think I've mentioned this yet. I don't know what is with this master cylinder for this rear brake. It's stuck. I need to fiddle with it and see how it's stuck, why, and then I'll probably just end up ordering another master cylinder. I haven't looked into it yet. Hopefully they're not too expensive. And then I think we're down, once washing it, wash the plastic, get it back on. And then once the plastic body's back on, I think there's maybe just a little bit of other stuff. That's about it. Uh, next is going to be uh, the upholstering seat and, uh, and putting new boots on the uh, CV axles. And uh, then I can share the be about ready to go after a good pressure washing and I uh, get the plastic and all that stuff cleaned up and so uh, we haven't been able to walk on it here for quite a while because uh, we got a bunch of snow and it lasted all of a day or two and now it's insanely muddy and it's all I could do to even walk out here my shoes get so balled up with mud so uh, once everything dries up hopefully then to get back to normal here and we can finish up this photo hopefully get it ready here and uh, hopefully it's all going to be working out just fine. I also have videos going to be coming out here on my John Deere 410 loaded backhoe on uh, getting the engine rebuilt and uh, I still want on parts to come in so hopefully they come in here pretty soon because the weather is supposed to get really nice. I'm hoping to uh, get it finished. So uh, be sure to like the video if you like it and uh, subscribe, hit that notification bell and I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.